In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to run a one-way ANOVA um, and also carry out uh, two keys post hoc tests using Stata version 14. Um, at this point, I've called up some data um, into uh, the memory. Um, if you look under data right here, under data editor, I have uh, three variables actually, but I'm only going to be working with two of them. I'm uh, looking at uh, the effect of different types of psychological therapies on client anxiety levels. And so uh, in this case, we're assuming that we've randomly assigned uh, 30 individuals to one of three treatment conditions. So we have group one, group two, and group three. And anxiety, uh, these are scores on an anxiety measure. So treatment is a categorical variable, uh, basically a nominal variable, and anxiety is um, assumed to be a continuous variable where low scores on anxiety represent uh, lower levels and high scores on anxiety reflect higher levels of anxiety. So uh, I'm going to click out of this and, uh, and basically run the one-way ANOVA. Um, so I'm going to go under statistics um, and we're going to use the menu option. So if I go under statistics, linear models and related and then go down to ANOVA MANOVA. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on analysis of variance and covariance. And uh, in this model or in this uh, menu uh, for the dependent variable I'm going to select anxiety. And uh, for selection of the independent variable uh, basically I could go ahead and select uh, treatment um, and uh, that will uh, suffice. Um, or, you know, if I, if I was actually running a more complicated model, I might utilize this little option right here and um, click on, uh, you know, treatment uh, for this variable, click on add to variable list, and then click on OK, and it would appear. So either way would work. If I was running something like an ANCOVA uh, through this route, then I could actually add in uh, covariates here, uh, note whether they're continuous, and then, and then move on. But right now we're just running a simple... Uh, one-way analysis of variance. <clears throat> so now what I'll do is um, I have actually two options to uh, submit the information. If I click on uh, the uh, submit button, uh, this box actually remains open and I, and I can make subsequent changes if I want to. If I, if I just click on OK, um, then the box will disappear. So you can see that and these are just basically the same results through both routes. Um, so as you're looking at this, you can see I've got uh, my treatment effect. That's my independent variable. I have my sums of squares uh, between, sums of squares within right here. There's my degrees of freedom between, degrees of freedom within. There are my mean square between and within terms. And then here is the F value and uh, the significance level. So uh, the significance level is just a P value. Um, when P is presented as something like this, it's, it just means that it's very, very small, and, but the p-value is not actually uh, zero. The p-value is actually uh, written or um, provided in research notes as P less than 0 0.001 oftentimes. So um, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, those are some of the basic uh, uh, results right here, the ANOVA, the ANOVA summary table. And so basically we would infer that, yes, there are statistically significant group differences um, on anxiety. All right. So basically there are significant differences between the treatment groups on anxiety levels. Um, you'll note also what's uh, provided. You see an R-square value and an adjusted R-squared uh, value right here. Uh, the R squared value is um, uh, oftentimes in, in ANOVA terminology, it's reported as eta squared. So eta squared. Um, and so, uh, but basically it means the same thing, which is uh, reflecting the uh, proportion of variation in uh, the uh, dependent variable uh, that is accounted for by the independent variable. So basically treatment accounts for about uh, fifty four percent of the variation in uh, anxiety scores uh, within our model the um, r squared value is actually analogous to um, omega squared so uh, it actually uh, uh, mathematically is the same thing so it's omega which is kind of hard to write with this little pen here 
but omega squared. And uh, you can see this uh, actually uh, if we just uh, click on, um, just ask for um, effect size indices. So I can do that if I just go down to the command line right here and I just type in E stat, E size, uh, then press enter. And now you can see that I get um, basically an eta squared value. So there's uh, the eta squared for the treatment effect, which as you can see is exactly the same as what the R squared value uh, actually is. You can also see a nice thing, uh, which is that you can get a confidence interval for your effect size. And so this is actually a really nice thing uh, to be able to report on uh, when you're writing your research report. Uh, so not only do you have a point estimate of the effect size, but you also have an interval estimate. Um, note too that um, if I type in um, the same command, but add in omega, so I'll just type in e stat, e size, comma, omega, and press enter. And now you can see I get omega squared. And uh, so there's the omega squared value, uh, which um, unsurprisingly is exactly the same as the adjusted R squared value. So basically, uh, mathematically, the R squared value uh, is the same as eta squared in ANOVA, and the omega squared is the same as uh, the adjusted R squared. So, um, so at any rate, we can see that just uh, looking at those effect sizes, we have a pretty good uh, effect size of treatment on uh, anxiety. Now, uh, what I might want to do, or what I may want to do, is to uh, look at uh, some descriptives associated with the tests. So what I can do is go to summaries, tables, and tests. And if I go down to uh, other tables here, and to a compact table of summary statistics. <clears throat> Here, what I will do is I'll ask for various descriptives. I'm gonna click on anxiety, because I want descriptives on anxiety, and I want it by group. So I'm gonna click on group statistics by variable and uh, cl click on treatment. So in terms of the statistics to display, I want the mean, I want uh, the uh, standard deviation, so I can click on that. Uh, I may ask for the uh, skewness and kurtosis statistics, so there's skewness. Uh, click on this and we get uh, kurtosis down here. So there's a lot of different things I can click on. So I'll click on, um, let's see if there are any options that I want to note, no, nothing there. So I'm going to click on OK. And so now you can see that I've got um, a report of the means for my three treatment groups. So there's the mean for the first group which is 6.5, the mean for the second, which is 7.6, and the mean for the third, which is 12.4. So the highest anxiety score was actually found uh, in the, uh, in the, the uh, treatment group three, and the lowest was found in treatment group one. You can see we have our standard deviations for each of our groups, as well as skewness and kurtosis statistics uh, for, for uh, each of those uh, groups. Okay, so, um, in addition to asking for uh, descriptives and effect size, what I might want uh, be interested in doing is asking for uh, pairwise uh, comparisons, basically running post hoc tests in order to explore possible uh, mean differences um, on the dependent variable. So uh, as a follow-up to the ANOVA, what I could do is go to statistics, go down to post estimation and click on it, and then go to uh, tests contrast and comparisons of parameter estimates here, and then go down to uh, essentially pairwise comparisons and open up this box. So uh, what I can do is um, essentially click on this little button right here, and then I will just select uh, my independent variable, and um, and then uh, I will drop do the little drop down box here, and then click on uh, two keys method. So you can see that there are various methods. There's Bonferroni's method, uh, you can see that there's SIDAC procedure, uh, Duncan's method, and so forth. And I'm going to select two keys, as, as this tends to be one of the more common, uh, commonly used uh, follow-up procedures. So I'm going to click on that. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that under reporting, uh, you can ask for various uh, things to show up in, in your tables. Um, you know, if I want to click on this right here, I can ask for a number of different things. I could ask for uh, effects with confidence intervals, p-values, 
uh, obviously there's both. Um, in fact, I'm just going to click on both. And uh, you can ask for a uh, table of margins and confidence intervals and so forth. So I'm just going to select these right here. And you'll see at this point that I get this box. And um, as you can see with the two keys, you've got comparison of the mean for group two uh, versus the mean for group one. So the first contrast, you can see it, it, basically this is the mean difference. So in the contrast um, uh, column, these are mean differences. And it's just basically, in this case, the mean for group two, which is 7.6, minus the mean for group one, which is 6.5. So that leaves you with a, comp uh, a difference of 1.1. Um, the difference between uh, group three versus one is the mean for three of 12.4 minus 6.5, which leaves you with 5.9. And then you've got uh, three versus two, which is essentially uh, the 12.4 minus 7.6. Um, and so you over here, you've got in this box, or this part of the box, you've got uh, two keys post hoc tests. Um, so these are the actual significance tests of the, of the contrast. So the null hypothesis for the contrast is, is that the difference in means is equal to zero. So uh, basically what we're looking for, these are p-values, and so if the p-value happens to be less than uh, your alpha threshold, typically it's 0.05, uh, then you would reject the null and you would conclude that the, uh, that the contrast or the difference in means uh, was significantly different from zero. If the p-value is greater than, say, 0.05, then you would conclude that uh, the mean difference uh, is not significantly different from zero. So you can see that really when we're talking about the comparison between groups two versus one, uh, there was no significant difference in means. So the, the contrast uh, in the means was not significantly different from zero. Uh, for the second comparison of group three versus one, you can see that uh, that was statistically significant. You had a p-value that would be reported as being less than 0 0.001. And, um, and uh, so, yes, we would infer that, yes, there's a significant difference between these two groups. And then by the same token, uh, comparison of three versus two, you can see that there was a significant difference there. You also notice that you got uh, two keys. Um, you, you basically have confidence intervals uh, for uh, these mean differences. So um, basically, you would interpret these using the null hypothesis, which is, a contrast uh, value of zero, meaning a mean difference of zero. And if zero falls um, uh, between the lower and the upper bound, as we see for, for a given interval, as we see in this case, so we see that zero would fall within that interval, then we would maintain the null and essentially conclude that there's no difference between these two groups. If zero happens to fall outside of, um, of the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval. So we'll look at the second contrast here or comparison here. And you can see that zero is actually falling you know, down here on the lower end. So it's outside of this interval. So we would conclude that there's a significant difference. The same would go for the third comparison. The thing to note about this is that basically um, the two keys using the confidence interval approach or the p-value approach is going to yield the exact same conclusion. So um, you're not better off choosing one approach over the other.